Hey, I'm Scott Hansman, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here talking with Eric Radzikowski, and we're talking about virtual machines scheduled events. Yes. So scheduling what kind of events, what big stuff is going to happen to my virtual machine? So this is all about maintenance. Mm. So as part of running the cloud, one of the responsibilities of Azure is to keep machines running and healthy and updated. Mm -hmm. And so there's two broad categories of maintenance. One is updates, and the other one is repairs. Okay. So for updates, what we're talking about is like host OS updates and the artifacts that we run on the host. Uh, in order to be able to run your VMs. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of repairs, we're talking about uh, at scale, things fail. Hardware fails, there's all sorts of different types of failures you have to deal with. Right. And so the platform uh, initiates repairs in order to ensure that your VM stays highly available. Mm -hmm. So scheduled events is about giving you advance notice as a customer about when we're going to perform maintenance so that you can take preventive actions in order to limit the disruption of those maintenance events. I understand that the, the, with maintenance, there's multiple kinds of things that could happen. You could do a reboot, but you can do a, a pause. Yeah, yeah. So are you going to tell me about anything like that? Yeah, like no, a pause, that's, that's I, might a really good question. I might only be 20 seconds. So actually, you're going to still tell me? Yeah, so most of them we're not even going to tell you about because they're not even disruptive. So Azure is actually really good at doing a lot of updates without even the customer uh, being aware of it. But then for the ones that we are aware of, um, we will tell you about uh, the pause, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll tell you about reboots, and we'll tell you about redeploys, which is moving the VM from one host node to another host node. Mm -hmm. Why would I care about being moved from one node to another versus a reboot if it looks like the same thing? Yeah, so the reason, the reason they're different is because in, in the impact is different to the VM. So in the case of a freeze, it's memory preserving, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, it's it's less impactful than for say a reboot, right. which is not memory preserving, right? But is disk preserving. And then for redeploys, uh, you're going to lose your local disk because you're getting moved to another host node. Ah, interesting. So you're not going to necessarily freeze dry my disk and move me over. I'm going to lose some state. Yeah, just your local state. So anything that you persisted to a durable form of storage, uh, anything that's that's back to Azure storage, all of that'll still be fine. Okay. But anything that you had in your local state that you would, you know, that that you lose during a redeploy, that's that's what which I lose. probably shouldn't have been doing anyway. You're not the important stuff. You just don't you don't want the important stuff there. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And not to get too far off in the weeds, but I've always wanted to know if the uh, the code that I've wrote. Uh, your machine fell asleep. <laughs> Sorry about that. You should have had a scheduled event. I should have. Um, I... If a machine pauses, the only way that I can know that I was paused is that time passed. I can check the clock. Yeah, yeah. How do I know I was asleep? Yeah. So, so in the case of in the case of a freeze, uh, that looking for that time skew, that unexpected time skew, uh, would be the way that that you could detect it. Mm. Um, thankfully, with scheduled events, now you could just query an NVM endpoint and know that you have a freeze scheduled for you, know when it's been started. And then you'll you'll be aware of those. Okay, so you just got to the root of it. So the way that I get these scheduled events, the way that I hear about that something in my, in my my universe is going to change, is that I query an endpoint. Where is that endpoint? That endpoint is inside your VMs. So it's a non runnable IP inside your VM mm -hmm. uh, that your application is able to query in order to uh, see the list of events that are scheduled against a set of VMs. Mm -hmm. So not just the the VM that's doing the querying, but in the case of, for example, I as an availability set, which I'll demo today, uh, the events go to the entire availability set. In the case of a cloud service, it goes to the entire cloud service. In the case of a VM scale set, it goes to a placement group. Okay. Uh, is this a, forgive my ignorance, is this a I do a get and you give me some JSON? Yeah. And that's basically it. It's that easy. How often do I need to do that? Am I doing this every few minutes, every few seconds? Yeah. So you're, you're, the the frequency at which you're pulling, you're pulling is going to be uh, the the gap in which you can detect. Mm -hmm. And so if you're pulling once a second, right, uh, you're going to you're going to ensure that you're getting. Uh, it, the maximum amount of time that we give you to take a preventive action mm -hmm. minus a second in the worst case. Mm -hmm. And are you going to be smart and restful in the sense of if I'm going, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? You're going to send me 304 not modified or you're going to send yeah, me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we have e-tags. So you'll be able to uh, e leverage e-tags in order to know that, hey, like you don't have to look at the whole doc. Uh, nothing's changed. Okay. So let's say that something's about to happen and I've got 15 minutes to deal with it. What kind of stuff could I do? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, that's going to depend on your workload. So for some workloads, it might mean uh, checkpointing. Uh, for other workloads, it might be draining sessions. Um, f for other workloads, it might be uh, you know saving saving some state. Uh, those those are the types of preventive actions that you'd be taking, so that whenever you resume, uh, you're able to pick up where you left off. All right, very cool. Let's see cool. some demos and some docs. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is pull up the Azure portal, and. I've prepped uh, three VMs that are in an availability set. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have one Linux VM and two Windows VMs. And what I'm going to show here is we're going to connect to the Linux VM and we're going to use it in order to monitor the events that are happening to our other VMs. And we're, from the portal, we're going to initiate a reboot to win zero okay. and a redeploy to win one. 
And we expect to see, by calling the NVM endpoint of the Linux machine, those vents. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Cool. Okay, so the Linux machine is going to be our watcher. This is going to be our watcher. All right. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use another recently introduced feature. See, I was just going to, I was going to wonder, are you going to go into DOS and use no, SSH? No, are you going to go into Bash? But let's no, use the latest and greatest. Like a proper employee, you use the fantastic Azure Cloud Shell, which is really yeah. super convenient, yeah. frankly. All right, we're going to do a little bit of scroll magic. We should make it so you can click on that and it opens automatically down there. Uh, that would be really cool. I okay. will talk to the person who owns that. I think that would be awesome. You could even set up all your SSH keys. All right, so you're SSHing over to that Linux machine, which is going to then watch this stuff. Yep. Okay. All right, so we'll make this guy big. And okay, so this is all it's going to take. So there's your non-routable IP, your That's 169. It. Yeah. And you're hitting scheduled events of yep. a certain, you know, of API a certain version. date. Yep. And then you're just going to pipe that through Python. Yeah, just so we get some pretty JSON. All right. All right. So we hit that. And we see that we have no events currently, which is what's expected. And right. that document incarnation is just letting you know that if you were in, if you're looking at documents from different VMs, you can do, you can compare them and see which one's newer. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to go back to the, the two VMs. So here, I have uh, Azure Friday Win One, and on the left, Win Zero. Okay. And within PowerShell over here, I'm going to show you that in the same VM. Uh, again, we have document card incarnation 18 right. and an empty set of events. Got it. All right. So we're going to go back to the portal and choose, minimize this. All right. So we'll go to win one or win zero rather. So you're going to do it from outside. Yeah, from outside. That way, the it's informed about it. If it if you did the shutdown on the inside, it would yeah. be initiated by you, and it, it didn't matter. Agreed. Yeah. And so this is this is essentially we uh, allowing you to simulate having a platform initiated reboot as maintenance. That was my question. Yeah. Okay. So you're rebooting. You said restart. Yep. So we hit restart. All right. We're going to come back over here. How long will that message stick around? As a, as a scheduled event, how long will it be available via that API? So it'll be available the entire length of the, um, the wait period, mm -hmm. and then the entire length while the event is going on. Mm -hmm. And then it will also, and then once the event is completed, uh, that event will no longer be part of the array. And so you'll know that the event is over. So we just called the API. Actually, I'll maximize this. And so Scheduled reboot. Yeah. Virtual machine and the name of the resource. So then, this is happening anywhere within within what within a resource group within a subscription. What's the scope of those events? Yeah. So because this is uh, this particular set of VMs is I as an availability set. The scope is the availability set. The scope is availability set. Okay. Yep. Interesting. If I wanted to have the scope be a resource group, could I do that? Or is it too much scope? Uh, the limit the limit today for I as is a is an availability set. Mm -hmm. uh, the limit for uh, cloud service is the cloud service itself, and then the limit for VM scale sets uh, is the placement group. Okay. And this do document incarnation. This is just a monotonic increasing number and yeah. I just I can use e tags but I can also look at the not the envelope but the inside of the document and just say as long as that number is higher than the number before something's happened correct yep. yeah, interesting yeah so I can start writing to this the docs are clear and preparing for any kind of events and test it by simply causing those events from the from the outside exactly yeah and I just I just want to call out a really important piece which is this not before time so the time that you get to prepare is now until the not before time and so that's that's letting you know how much time you so have. Immediately upon noticing that message, I should take action. Yes. Yeah. So when you see the message, you should you should start taking action. Mm -hmm. And then when the not before time has elapsed, that uh, signals to the platform that it can begin when ready. But sometimes you're going to want uh, you're you may not want to wait the full entire the time, right? Mm -hmm. You may want to you may have taken a preventive action. You want to get that action over with, and then get back to doing whatever work you were doing, for example, in the case of maybe a reboot. And so in that case, we can actually expedite the event so that it, uh, it essentially tells the platform that it can begin when ready. So what we have here that I have staged is the post 
for a start request. And what I'm going to paste in is the unique identifier for... I think I'm a little confused about the not before time. You schedule a reboot as opposed to just clicking restart, which would happen immediately? No. Uh, so because you've enabled uh, scheduled events, right? Right. You're now going to uh, get that, that, that preventive time for all types of reboots. Oh, you get a grace period. Yeah. Okay, so where do I enable? Then that's what I missed. When did I enable the scheduled events? The first time you called the endpoint from inside the VM. Ah, that was that was missed. That was missed. Okay. Yeah, so the first time I express interest in scheduled events, there is an implicit opt-in to an interest in special events, yeah. which then gives me a a a grace period. That Correct. grace period is fifteen minutes. Uh, it's fifteen minutes for reboots and for freezes, and it's ten minutes for redeploy. Interesting. Okay, that would explain why this is fifteen minutes in the future. Yeah. Okay. So here you're saying you're going to do a post, and then you're saying start request. You're basically saying Go ahead and initiate that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So this we'll, is the go ahead and do it now button. Yep. And so we're going to send that request. And what we expect to see is uh, after we query the API again, uh, that the event has changed to started state. And so we'll give that. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but we'll query it a few times and see okay. when that happens. So we're still scheduled. So you posted in the event ID saying, go ahead with this event, continue as you can or as you like. And we're going to watch for event status scheduled to change from scheduled to something else. OK, there you go. Event status started. So yeah. then now it's begun. Document incarnation is now plus one. Yeah, and what we'd expect to see is that that VM that we were already peed into is gone because it got rebooted. Very cool. Yeah. So I can practice this now. I can start using this now. Yeah. And then if something happens that wasn't initiated by me, whether it be an Azure hardware maintenance or one of the uh, you know, upcoming reboots, I'll be ready to go. Absolutely. Very cool. And the docs on this are where? I will pull up that URI. So they're right here on docs.microsoft.com. Very cool. So we can start preparing for this kind of information now because it's available. It's yeah, out. It's out. Yeah, it's in public preview. So we, we absolutely want you to use it. We want your feedback. So let us know, um, you know any, any feedback, really. Uh, we'll, we'll take that into account. Fantastic. I'm yeah. learning all about scheduled events here on Azure Friday.